But before I start, I just wanted to, just, if we could, just bow our heads and just say, you know, just a moment of time. Because this day, uh, today, you know, it's always important to honor our ancestors as, a, as well as our supreme being, our God. And so, you know, just, you know, not to get into all different type of, because everybody has. Can we do a moment of silence in recognition to those ancestors? Because there were many ancestors who did not get an opportunity to be here today. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, excuse me, I'm kind of a little emotional today. And he died on the battlefield. You know, when I see this brother here, you know, I don't know if you know who he is, Brother Gopi's total, mm -hmm. and from South Africa, and the brothers and sisters died on the battlefield. And you know, this is, we know there's a, there's a battle out here, you know, just to try to survive in America. Because the way this system has been set up and rigged against this, since we first came into the shores of America. But I'm gonna go back because I want to do this correctly and give that honor to those ancestors. Today we find ourselves celebrating, and now it's officially as of two, uh, two o'clock, two twenty, officially a state holiday yes. in the United States. Yes. 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 You know, I'm a monk family, and I'm feeling the, the way up because I'm a monk family. Okay. When I look around the room and see those people who've been there from my beginning, our beginning, when we first went into Germantown with this. And I'll share with you the history of it. The brother here, the brother back there, this brother here, people know this brother here. When I first came with the vision and the idea of Juneteenth, I had a store down in, in South Philly. And this brother came up to me and I told him, told him the idea about Juneteenth and what it's you know, my vision of what I would like it to be, and I'll share with you that history. And the brother said, I'll, I'll help you, brother, I'll be there, you know? And he took the, my papers. He took my papers. We're talking about in 1995. And he took these papers, and he edited them. The papers. Then he took the papers to a friend by the name of Ruben Vincent. And Ruben Vincent took those Papers, I think it was like about 1520, I mean, I forgot those numbers. And he gave it to him, and the brother gave us six papers. And I'll share with you later on, because I want to get those, that knowledge of those ancestors. And those papers is the foundation of Juneteenth today. And that, that brother right there, he stayed back from the board, from of South Africa, you know what he did with Mandela and them. And he spoke to the kids, the young ones, about struggles about life. And um, so please, just bow ahead. I say. I I want to share with you, uh, but you know, people who talk about Juneteenth, I think it's important that we truly understand exactly what Juneteenth is. You know, we hear, but I know people hear about it, and you know, and, it's, and it says, oh, now it's a state holiday. But it's important, because I know a lot of people out there is, you know, doing Juneteenth activities and events, and that's the way we started it in 1997. We started by going into with the brother with chair with you. Once we got those six papers from Ruben Benson, we decided to go to organizations, not individuals, Organizations that had like numerous of numbers, a church might have up to a thousand. We went to organizations. We were going to go to, and we asked those organizations to, uh, you know, using the concept of one of the founders, you know, of freedom in America, Reverend Absalom Jones. 
Reverend Absalom Jones lived in Germantown. He lived there uh, also among another uh, ancestor, Reverend John Allen. John Allen was born in Germantown. And uh, uh, Absalom Jones was born in Delaware and then through the process of slavery. He was sold to slavery and he was sold to the slave master in Germantown. And he, go to, he went to live there. So Germantown also has a rich history because it was the first protest against slavery. First protest against slavery in the United States. Let me just share with the history because, you know, in his 400th anniversary year, I want to take the opportunity to give that acknowledgement and recognition to those ancestors and how they end up here in America. You know, we tell me this is the 400th anniversary of what? 1619. 1619. The 400th anniversary of 1619. So I don't know if anybody knows 1619, but let me just share how 1619 came to be. In Angola, there was, uh, the Portuguese had, uh, you know, they, they, in 1484, they came to, 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 to Africa. And as it was there, you know, they came among them and said, you know, hey, look, can we, can we have this, this land right here? It's this little space <laughs> right here. And, and they bought, you know, the, you know, sugar and, you know, things, the trade. And they was able to get a little space. <laughs> you know? And so then when they got they said, oh, no, we, look at this. They start building forts. <laughs> they start telling them, like, come on, come on, let's come here, you know. And I said, they built forts. And the forts was for what? They was prepared for what? War. Take yeah. over. Take over. They was, prepared, they was prepared for, you know, and, you know, they came and, you know, they said, okay, they gave it to them. And they were prepared and said they built forts. This was 1484. And guess what? Next year, what they did. <laughs> but they built that thing up. And they got the people coming. They said, now we want to do what? As you said, we want to take over. So there was a series of battles, you know, that took place. And the Portuguese, you know, ended up, you know, they had the guns. <laughs> you know, and they were able to, they were able to win take over that area. And so at that time, we years later, the other various nations decide to come to that area because of what the slave trade. They wanted to participate and receive the value of that slave trade. And as a result of them participating and receiving that, the, the British came in and they decided to uh, get these slaves and put them on these slave ships and take them to Brazil. They thought they were taking them to Brazil. And the Portuguese had the plan, was it's okay? They set it up so that when they ship sail, they, at a certain point, they did the pirate thing and they captured it and took over the ship. And they were able to take over the ship. And when they took over the ship, there were 60 something Africans, you know, there was 60 something Africans, but 20 of those Africans went to on one ship. And that ship right there sailed into America at Fort Monroe, Virginia. What was the year? 1619. August the 25th, 1619. And what they did with those Africans, they divided, you know, into you know, we're one of these slaves, and they sailed up the, uh, the James River, and they, they sold those Africans. Now, if the other ship tried to also come in, and they said, no, no, you're not, you can't come in. So he took it to Mexico. But that was the first Africans, the slave Africans here in America. Let me show you for the sake of time, the first Africans that came into Philadelphia. Now, it came as a result of Sir William Penn. Sir William Penn, you heard of William Penn? Anybody know William Penn, right? 
We get five. You get a five. And so William Penn, the father, you know, he was doing all kind of, he was in charge of the military. And you know what he did? For, 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 for the crown. He went and captured Jamaica. He went and captured Jamaica for the crown. And so the king, King Charles, owed a debt to who? He did what? Gave him the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But the king. And then he did what? He died. So there was a debt which was old. It was a debt which was old. Now, William Penn, the son, he's an Irish. He's, he's an Irish. You know? And, and he was he was like watching, you know, what they, they, they was doing. <laughs> and he said, you know, I want to be, you know, I don't want to participate in that. I want to be a Quaker. Mm. So he decided to be go over to the Quakers. Now the Quakers had you know, they were very interesting people. Because here he's got, you know, these pompous, you know, these, and they, they were like, hey man, you ain't, you know, you ain't, you ain't that. And they're like, man, he's doing it in public. <laughs> hey, he can't be doing that. He can't be doing that in the public, man. He don't have to be in public. We got to do something against him. So we, we do what? What they start doing? Putting him in jail. Locking him up. And he's up cutting the finger off. <laughs> you know, they killed a couple in there. A couple of them died. I mean, they did all these things to these Quakers. And so these Quakers were like, man, wow, man. <laughs> you know, and so William Penn said, you know, I can help my people. <laughs> you know, I got to get them out of here. So, so he says, you know, the king, Charles, owes my father a debt, which means he owes me a debt. And he also, with the, my father, of course, my father left me all his slaves. And, and he, 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 he now owes me a debt. So let me take my people. <laughs> out of here. Hey, King, you know, 1682, he said, March, he says, uh, you know, you owe my father's debt. And he says, yeah, I owe you. Yeah, I do, you know, and uh, what you want? What you want to do? He says, well, um, this land over here, <laughs> you know, yeah, Pennsylvania, that area there, I mean, I want that. That's what I want. But it wasn't the land. Who land was it, really? Indians. But, but you know how they do. They, 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 you know how they do. They, 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 um, that's my learn, you know. And so, and, so, and so, he said, yes, I want that land over there. He says, okay, I tell you, for that debt that I owe your father, and also I do. Yeah, and you owe some money, too. You remember that money you owe? He said, uh, yeah, well, you owe that. Pennsylvania, that area over there. So he gave him all the way down to Pennsylvania. He gave him Chester. He gave him Delaware. So the first, when William Penn sailed, in March, he landed here in October, and he, he, he came, well, he landed here before that, uh, uh, August, and he came into the port of Delaware, <coughs> Delaware, and then by October, he was, no, September, he went into Chester, and then from Chester, he went into Philadelphia, right there, uh, Pennsylvania, you ever hear it called Dock Street with the creek, yeah. you know, the area in which he came in, actually, you ever know, uh, been the word, word, many of them, yes. just about in that area, just over there, you just, you know, that's when he came in there. Oh, okay. He came in there. He came out, you know, just a little beyond that, that's when he came in there. Mm. And so he came into Philadelphia. Now, the, the, uh, the Europeans, it was also there, it was some settlers there with, with uh, in 1639. Swedes. The Swedes. Who came in 1639. They was here when William Penn came. But William Penn came with who? He came with those rich Quakers who also had with them their what? Slaves. William Penn had slaves, but he, he, he heard it from who? His father. So these were the first African slaves that came into Philadelphia by way of William Penn. And he negotiated with the Indians about the land. 
that he would be able to acquire. Now, he did it in good faith, but I have to say he had kids. <laughs> and and um, they swindled the, the Indians out of that land. But when he came, one of the things is that he had a lot of issues and problems, you know, back there in England. And people here, you know, tell them to make, you know, decide not to give you this piece of land, and you can have this, and you can negotiate with this, and then he's doing all that, but he's constantly throwing a lot of money around. And he's also dealing with people that's not what? They just not, you know, you know, I mean, they have a turn. But when he brought those slaves in here, in 1682, in 1688, there was the first protest against slavery. In Georgetown. And in Georgetown, Africa. In Worcester. And so they was Quakers because of what had happened to them in York. Because of what happened to them in York. They were very sympathetic with the African struggle and the things that he was going through. Because they, they visualized and saw that African, what he was going through, what they were going through where? And so you had some Quakers who didn't like that. And the Quakers came in and they had a protest against, against the government. And so people don't realize that even though you have all these different states, and the number one state, a, a, a state, city, in the whole United States was moved. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. how, how do you know that? The original capital. First capital. Original. First. Where? What else was there? First what? Supreme White Court. White House. The first what? White House. White House? Mm -hmm. well, first what? Declaration of Independence. Legislation? Right there, six. Chestnut, right there, you know, in the tennis hall. All was right there. The first what? Bank. Second bank. Third bank. Hospital. Hospital. In these United States. In the United States. Also was down there. I'm sorry I'm going off my speech, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but you know, I put my PP on. So, so <laughs> and so 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 you know was also down there with the first abolition society. That's where the abolition society. Right down there also. Among those what? Quakers. Because they were very serious about stopping the enslavement of Africans. And so they, they took on a mission. Now, if, now I'll tell you about these important sites. They're what? The, the, the White House, the you know, Declaration of Independence was written right there. You know, it, everything, you know, the first Supreme Court, everything was right there. Right there, right there, right? You go to Little Bell, you see all what? Right there, right? Guess what also was right across the street? From all of that. The Pennsylvania Abolition Society had a hall called Pennsylvania Hall. So you don't know that what's, what's all around there, you know, there's the first, the first prison right across from. Uh, from uh, the uh, Congo Square. You go there, Congo Square, the first, that was a prison. They helped the Africans. You know. But all this was in Philadelphia. The African Society. Where was that first prison? Say it again. Where was the first prison? You said it was a prison? Yeah. Where was that location? So that was Six and Chestnut. You know, you know the, the, the in between between yeah, six and seven there. is the uh, and Walnut and what I think that's Locust is is uh, Congo Square. Now, the simple thing about the Juneteenth, we was able to put a monument. If you go there, we have a monument there in recognition to those that site, because they said they said in the, in the 18th century, those were the many nations of Africa used to gather right there at that site. And it's a slave graveyard in that building right there. Okay. Because they would do libations to their in the building. Right, at right there, uh, where Congo Square is, and then that was an old church, and there's some slaves buried in that. Right there. Thank you. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right there. That site right there was a burial ground for 
after this. And so they would go there and do libations to those ancestors. And so we had the Abner Society constantly, you know, that building I told you, you know, you know what happened to it? As soon as, it, as soon as brand new building, as soon as it opened up. Fire. Hmm? Fire. 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 See, one of the problems was <laughs> with the, the plight of Africans is that as African population begins to grow, mm -hmm. and everybody begins to see that Philadelphia was what? The mecca of freedom because of Absalom Jones. And they start coming out. What did Absalom Jones do? He said, Father Freedom. Now, who is he? What did he do? What did he do? Yeah. Now, he, I said he also, what? He, did I say he went to school with who? This guy named uh, Anthony. Did, did I tell you that? Who it was, it was the founder of the Pennsylvania Abolition Society? Okay. Did I tell you that? No, you he didn't. went to that the school, the school. Both of them, Absalom Jones, did I tell you that? No. So, so yeah, no, yeah, he did. And so you know, you know, see what school it is, and training it is for those two brothers. Because from there, you know, they would do, people don't know, they were in the streets, just like the, the, the Quakers did, they did what? They went in the street and start what? Evangelizing, hey man, you enslaving my, you know, hey, you ain't right, you call yourself so moral. You talking about you're a Quaker, this is about morality. Dang, you, don't, you can't do it, come on man. You know, what's up, this is, you know, religion? And so they was hearing that, and he was doing it what? They could tell him stop it, but they what? They used to do it in what? York. <laughs> so he could tell them. And he was there, he was there to do it. And so, and so as we saw them constantly do it, they kept it here. They says, uh, you know, hey, look, um, hey, man, come on, we got to do something about this. And because Philadelphia was the number one site in the United States, everything centered around Philadelphia. So the Quakers, we're talking about Quakers, had all of that. They was in control of this United States. Oh, Mark, everything came to the Quakers. They was in control. So what they decided to do, they said, we want to do what? They tried to go to, you know, some went to the, uh, uh, the other process uh, of slavery, you know, and said, you know, please seven years, you know, uh, you know, break it off. But some just outright began to, because as the population of slavery started to come, and more and more advocates in the protest came, the 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 the, the Abbey Society before underground to go to the Underground Railroad. They were the one that started the Underground Railroad in the United States. And so they would have these applicants go to the Underground Railroad. Now you know, people say I would talk about who was the people there that were part of that. We know Octavius Cato, mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass, and Harry Tubman. People say, oh yeah, you know that? Because Harry Tubman used to speak to the soldiers. And I'll get into that. They used to speak to the soldiers. And so as a result of these Africans, now also in Philadelphia is a, is a day which is called Watch Night Service. See, Juneteenth is the Jubilee. Juneteenth is the, the Jubilee. But there's another holiday, which is the, I used to say it was the oldest holiday, but this is actually the third oldest holiday. It's the complete, you know. It's the third oldest holiday. It's the Jubilee. The second oldest holiday is what? Watch next Earth. Okay. And the oldest holiday is something called Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There's the only Thanksgiving. You Google Thanksgiving, 1808, and see what comes up. Reverend Absalom Jones, at the time, the, the him evangelizing in the streets, and also he was very, he was very fortunate because the British attacked, you know, the Civil War. I mean, the Revolutionary War, and so they also came into what? Philadelphia. You know, y'all live in Germantown, you know, Valley Forge, and all in the Philadelphia. They, and, and while he was in Philadelphia, and you know, took over, guess who was in the streets? Who was in the streets? The Quakers? Free black folks. Quakers, man, they could have been with those guys, man. They took no to They ain't doing that. I'm staying over here. I'm quiet. You know, we go over here. It was on the streets. Absalom Jones and Reverend Allen. Tell them the truth. Now, the British. Free. 
our people. Stop this stuff. And then guess what happened? So, so, I'm ready for this challenge. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built for this. I think that we all have a purpose in life.